August 8, 1969, unknown intruders broke into the fashionable Los Angeles home of movie director Roman Polanski and his pregnant wife, actress Sharon Tate. There they slaughtered her and four others. One night later, another home was invaded and a middle-aged grocery executive and his wife were killed with equal brutality. In two days, an entire city was seized by fear, but it was months before the crimes were connected. When they were, a small bizarre character named Charles Manson was charged with provoking his apparently fanatic followers to commit the crimes, and a national obsession to understand these people began. Who was Charles Manson? As he recalls it, the pain of Charles Manson's childhood began early. I am a street child. I'm a runaway little girl at 15 years old out of Kentucky named Kathleen Maddox. I didn't have a husband. My husband's name was Scott. And he married somebody else and went down the road and she went to Cincinnati and had a guy named Charlie Manson. Charles Manson was born on November 12, 1934, in Cincinnati, Ohio, in Cincinnati General Hospital. His mother, Kathleen Maddox, was just 16 and unmarried when he was born. His father was a Colonel Scott, who'd briefly known Kathleen. She was very, very motherly looking. She was as motherly looking as my mother was. My mother went to prison for five years for strong-arm robbery. Her brother had to deal a trick in off the street and put the yoke on him to get some money to eat. But when, I, when I heard she was a prostitute, it just... I couldn't believe that either. And she went to prison, and I used to visit her in the prison visiting room. His mother's absence and rejection would make a life with her a dream of Charles Manson's throughout his childhood. Manson spent many of his early years in the small town of McMechan, West Virginia, with his deeply religious aunt and uncle, living by all appearances a not unhappy small town life. The house was a big older house, but it was beautiful. He had, he had just about anything he wanted, I would say. His, his aunt and uncle and grandmother took him to church. He didn't like going. The only thing he really liked, you know, was the singing. But Charles loved to sing. But some of Manson's outlook on the world came from another uncle, a mountain man. Out of the Kentucky mountains, when uh, my uncle said, we ain't surrendered, we're still rebels. And we'll be rebels until the end of time because I ain't accepting no Yankee school. He said, don't go to those schools, boy. So when I was nine years old, I set the school on fire, and I went to reform school. Between 1942 and 1947, Manson spent periods of time with his mother and her assorted lovers around the Midwest, but then, unable to place him in a foster home, she allowed the court to place him in the Gibault School for Boys. After 10 months, he ran away to find her, but she would not take him back. This was a turning point for Charles Manson. The only thing my mother taught me was that everything she said was a lie. And I learned never to believe anyone about anything. He ran away from school again and began a life of petty crimes, including breaking into grocery stores and stealing a bicycle. In 1949, after time in a juvenile center, he was sent to Father Flanagan's famous boys' town, According to a 1949 article in the Indianapolis News, a dead-end kid who has lived in an emotional blind alley is happy today. He's going to Boys Town. Manson ran away four days later. Now just 13, he stole cars, broke into stores, and committed his first armed robberies. He was then sent to the Indiana School for Boys, where he claims he was raped and repeatedly beaten. He ran away 18 times. Now, the punishments escalated after he stole cars, committed armed robbery, and held up gas stations. He went from the National Training School for Boys to Natural Bridge Camp to federal reformatories at Petersburg, Virginia and Chillicothe, Ohio, where he was paroled in 1954. He was just 19 years old. Around this time in Los Angeles, one of Manson's future followers, Patricia Krenwinkel, was a little girl. 
Her comfortable childhood could not have been more different from Charles Manson's, but even her home was not without its sadness. During the time I was brought up, nothing was talked about. I mean, my parents' dissolution of their marriage. You don't talk about that. You don't talk about problems in the home. I never felt like I had a sense of who I really wanted to be or become. In 1949, Leslie Van Houten was born into a solid middle-class family in Altadena, California. From an early age, she wanted to help the world. Her parents, too, would divorce. I was always very a uh, creative girl, young girl, you know, artistic. But I never, for a while, I wanted to be a school teacher. Somewhere along the line, I got distracted and I lost motivation believe that I was desperately seeking someone that I could love and hold on to and call my own. That somehow my dad leaving had left a space there. In January 1955, back in McMechan, the 20-year-old Charles Manson married 17-year-old Rosalie Jean Willis. He held odd jobs, but continued to steal cars, driving them across state lines. 1944, I went to Juvenile Hall. I didn't get out until 1954. I got a little girl named Rose, stole some guns, went to Georgia, burglarized a, a store, got a, a straw hat full of dimes, and came to L.A. I turned 21 years old in the L.A. County Jail. I wasn't out but a hot second. I've been in jail all my life. It was one of the curious facts about Charles Manson. He would often manage to commit small-time crimes that nonetheless violated federal laws and would bring tough penalties. A suspended sentence turned into a 10-year term after he violated probation on a charge of forging a very small treasury check. I was struck by something initially, and that is that he had been sentenced to 10 years uh, for attempting to cash a $43 treasury check, and he did seven and a half years. From 1951 to 1967, Charles Manson's rap sheet shows a range of crimes from mail theft to forgery to running prostitutes. It was at McNeil Island Penitentiary that Manson developed a skill at the guitar and an interest in music that would play an important part in later events. The man who taught him the steel guitar was an aging fellow prisoner, the renowned Depression-era gangster Alvin Creepy Carpus. More important, it was in prison with its rigid codes of behavior and its hierarchy that Manson developed his way of looking at the world. See, I never realized that people outside are much different than the people inside. People inside, if you lie, uh, you get punched. You get misused. You don't lie to the lieutenant. Lieutenant don't lie to you. Uh, there's a certain amount of truth in prison. And being raised in prison, I was raised pretty much in the light of that truth. He did his own time. He pretty much refused to be programmed to go along with the expectations of the prison staff. He sp apparently spent a lot of time in his cell uh, playing the guitar, writing music. Uh, he did attend a class, did very well in a power of positive thinking class, which I always thought was a part of his style. He was released from prison in 1967. It's been said that he asked not to be released. He'd now spent more than half of his 32 years inside and prison was the only real home he'd ever known. What's more, Charles Manson had never known life with a real family. That would make a family of his own very appealing. Prison may have meant a life of little change for Charles Manson, but life outside was changing radically. It was a far different world now from the one he'd known before prison, and was one where his particular skills would serve him well. It was the mid-1960s, and the Haight-Ashbury district of San Francisco was, for hippies and others escaping the mainstream, the promised land. What we saw at its peak were literally thousands of flower children all over the country, all over the world, attracted to this movement, like moths to a flame, you know, summer in San Francisco. There was a philosophy here that was totally revolutionary that they'd not heard before, and this was the epicenter of it. A lot of very young, creative, exploring people came, came there, but then you started to see a shift where uh, more disturbed, sicker, more drug-involved people started to come. 